Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for joining us. So, uh, as you saw from the intro, I am officially uh, Beardy Man's favourite channel on YouTube. Um, anyway, all jokes aside, um, if you don't know who Beardy Man is, uh, he's a beatboxer, producer, general performer, extraordinaire, and I'll uh, leave a uh, link to both his YouTube channel and his uh, Discord if you want to join. Um, I am actually, you know, full disclosure, I'm a patron of his. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pay him to put the uh, review, but he has visibility of my channel uh, through the fact that I occasionally post links and stuff on Discord to share what I'm doing here. Um, he is genuinely interested in, in what I'm doing around the VST development and also around the stuff with open stage control. So uh, anyway, so without further ado, uh, let's crack on. So I had a really nice uh, comment from one of my uh, viewers, a guy called Dylan, here, who left a comment on the um, on the cloning widgets one. Um, and so I asked him about basically anything he'd like to, you know, he'd like me to tackle. And um, so yeah, he talked some things about use of, use of the ternary operator. Um, and I think about styling, you know, things about turning, you know, turning buttons on and off or, or, or changing the style based on the uh, click state. So what I thought I would do would be to, um, uh, would go through a little bit of a demo um, or in terms of implementing some of these things. And then hopefully that will uh, cover that off uh, and then we can um address some of those questions that Dylan had and I assume they're sort of common problems that, that you that you all have. So um, I do have my sample sort of uh, thing going on here um, and, and again so I've got some some button control so typically this is what a standard button looks like. Um, actually, let me put it in editor mode, maximize uh, the window, yeah so this is what typically what a, what a button looks like. This is a toggle button, click on, click off, We'll see the type here is uh, mode is toggle um, on and off. Uh, let me just um, make that invisible and uh, make that one invisible as well. Yeah, so that's typically um, what we have. Um, so what have I done here? I've essentially, um, you'll notice they have rounded corners. That's the only sort of nod to any sort of styling that I've given them. Um, so for every widget there is in OSC, you will notice that there is this style section. There are some standard styles that are common across all of the widgets. And these are the ones down the right hand side here, which are color text. If you click on a question mark, this brings up the um, the help. It's really useful actually, it brings up the help um, from the documentation pages. Now the documentation pages will give you some information about all of the different widgets. There's a widget reference. And actually, if we just bring that up, just open stage control, which is here. And you go to documentation and you go to widgets and um, what is it? Properties reference. So, yeah, so this is the URL. Again, I'll link, link all of these useful links in the description below, as per usual. But yeah, if you look here, you'll see, let's say, for a, a basic, for a button, um, there are some uh, properties like CSS, color text on, label vertical wrap that kind of stuff um, so all good um, but back to here uh, so basically you'll notice that all of these different widgets have these uh, the color elements uh, to them they have the ability to embed some HTML um, HTML I've kind of shown you before which means you can add sort of maybe a P tag which is hello let's see what that does yeah so basically that that sticks some um, HTML over and above um, where the actual uh, label is. Label is another important um, uh, property of a button widget. So this is the uh, button here. This is Vox to our bus. Um, so in my live template, this uh, what it actually does is it um, it sends a control message uh, of 101, um, and I'm listening for that, and that essentially. Uh, maximizes the send in Ableton to the recording bus so I can record the vocals and send the vocals to the recording bus. Anyway, um, so what have I done? Uh, previously, uh, I showed some embedded uh, CSS in here. Uh, and I think I had, basically, I think I had, uh, I can't remember what the CSS for rounded corners is. Doesn't matter, I will look it up. Um, I'm of the opinion that you should 
make changes in one place and then uh if you want to if you want to update something then you're only updating it in one place the problem i've got actually let me just quickly um give you a sneak preview um yeah what is the okay it's border radius right okay let me just copy that we'll come back to that in a second so yeah putting um putting the css in here border radius 5px so basically i if i do that it's exactly the same thing i can um i can make this like 25 it's going to be huge right um yeah so inline css so every widget has the ability to put inline css the issue i have with this is that if you wanted all your buttons to be uh, to change then you have to go through each widget and you have to then change the value um, of the css property for each of your widgets now the um the better way uh, in, in my opinion is to uh assign a custom class so this is what this does class um you give it a custom class so i've got rounded dash corner five um, and then you want to define this, uh, what the style for this class is, in a separate style, st separate style sheet. Um, this is what you would do for HTML development. You'd have your .html files, you have your .css files. Don't necessarily want to get into um, SCSS and less and stuff at the moment. So basically, we'll just we'll just deal with HTML and CSS. So this is styled using CSS, and um, yeah, you have the ability. If you go here, you have the ability to define a class, and um, here we give it a random corner. So, okay, well, how do we tell Open Stage Control um, where to find uh, a style sheet and what is a style sheet? So, CSS is cascading, cascading style sheets, .css is a file extension for a cascading style sheet, and um, when you start up um, Open Stage Control. I've given it this path here. Uh, so let me just uh, make sure I've saved everything. Oops, I didn't want that. Let me stop this. So when you download Open Stage Control, there's a resources folder for the app, assets. So I made a new folder called custom and I put this file in here called uh, test.css. Um, so this means for me, this makes much more sense because you want to edit a file once and have that change be accessible to every control or every widget in your um, template that needs to access that so if i click start again on the uh, open stage control boom we're back in a template this is my sort of scratch pad over here uh, control e is to enter edit mode and if i look in here um tab effects this is the panel one so this uh, button six is not visible. Let me make this visible. So, oh no, didn't want to do that just yet. I don't want to give all the give all the good stuff away too quickly. Um, yeah. So a note on styling. That's what I wanted to say here. So I've given this a class of rounded dash corner five. I've got that test. This is test.css in the location that I talked about, which is in app assets custom test.css, and. I wish I could make anyway. Um, I was trying to make it bigger, sorry, it doesn't work. Um, so the, the notation for a class is a dot. Um, if it was, uh, yeah, so and I've got dot round corner five, and the style for this is border radius 5px. So what this means is wherever I give, and actually, let me try this. So let me, I'll create another style, I'll copy and paste this rounded corner um, 12, let's say, okay. Change this to 12px. Right. Cool. And let me copy this style name. Um, cool. So what this means is so I've got two uh, class styles here. One dot rounded corner 5 with a 5px radius and one dot rounded dash corner 12 with a 12 a pixel radius. So what this means is this widget here is styled with uh, that dot rounded corner 5 uh, style. If I change this to 12, click save, then the rounded corner radius styling changes to 12 pixels. Every widget um, that is styled uh, with that uh, class will change. All of these have the, the class rounded corner 5. And what you'll notice is it's really handy. So let me bring this in here. 
let me change this uh, to 15 click Save um, Open Stage Control picked up on the fact that this style sheet had changed and it updated all of these widgets uh, at the same time. Uh, change it back to five, save. Um, this reloads automatically. So again, so what you're doing is you're editing a style once in one place, which is really good practice. You've got you've got a separate file. So you've got your JSON file, which is your actual uh, template, and then you've got your CSS file, which defines your style look and feel. But what that means is that if you want to make a change, you just make a change in one place and everything updates, which I think is definitely the way that you should be um, should be thinking about things. Cool. The next thing um, uh, that Dylan asked was around, uh, okay, well, how do, uh, I made some notes here. Um, like, how do I simply want to change the icon or a color of a button depending on the state of the button? Right. Yeah, so we're not going to use at this for this. And this also we're also going to answer one of his other questions is, well, how do I find out um, using like the Chromium uh, developer console, like uh, Element Browser, um, what style is applied to what? So let's say we want a different style um, when this button is on or off. So how do we know how to do that? So we can style this button how we want. And let me introduce button six, which I've given away enough times already, and make it visible. So what I did is I took this style to the next uh, level. So um, this is a button, button six, and I have styled it with class cool button, obviously. Um, let me just take it out of editor mode. When I mouse over, it's got a different image. Uh, this button, when I click it, um, it goes down, and it's clicked, and when I mouse over and then click, so it's got a different, uh, it's got a different style for when I mouse over when it's clicked as to when it's uh, moused over when it's not clicked. And look, this looks like a pretty cool button, right? It's, um, it looks like a normal button. Uh, if you want to know how I generated this, I used a, um, a tool called Knob, Knob Man, uh, which is typically for make, m making uh, knobs that rotate, which I've been using my Juice VST plugin stuff, but you can also use it for buttons as well. And yeah, uh, this is one of the ones in the gallery. It's just a simple sort of old school type button, something you might find on like, a, you know, an 808 or something. Um, but I thought it looked quite nice. And again, so I sort of think, well, how can I do that in, in open stage control so I can give my templates are kind of you know, a nice look and feel i'm not saying you should copy this again i've said before i'm not a graphic designer this is just me sort of showing you what you can do and then um you using that information uh to uh to go forward and the other thing you'll notice actually for this is when i click the button on um it makes this button appear and that was another one of uh, dylan's questions so how do we do that so let me bring up editor mode again um Again, so in, in in interest of maintaining, you know, our editing things in one place, um, I have implemented this class cool button. Right. So what you'll notice from this, so this is the uh, dot cool button style. Uh, so the first thing you notice is we set the border to none, so we get rid of that um, outline border. So essentially, what we're trying to do is we want to get rid of all of the um, default sty styling that Open Stage Control implements, and then we want to implement our own. So these settings here, alpha fill on off, all the ones with start dash dash. So how do we know what we need to set to none in order to be able to then override it with a custom image? Well, if you go back to the uh, reference, uh, what you'll see here is this, so this is basics uh, button. Um, you'll notice the CSS, these are just available CSS variables, uh, color background, widget fills, right, all of these. So you want to, what you want to be able to do is set those uh, to none to clear that style um, because we don't want any of the default look and feel. So we don't want any of this, you know, alpha settings and stuff um, that, you know, uh, fade the button in and out or, or have any of the border. We simply just want an image that we control. Uh, so the way we do that is we set these uh, values to zero. So the other um, uh, setting you'll notice then in the final setting, sorry, is the background image. So if I go to uh, here, what you'll notice is we've got, um, if I open these in here, we've got essentially uh, four different images, uh, two where the LED is on, which is uh, with the shadow, and then depressed, and pressed down, and then up without a light on, and down as well. So what we're going to do is we are going to, set for the standard button um, which is image three which is up and off 
uh, we're going to basically set the, the background um, to be that. Now, okay, so you might think, well, how do I know what this path is? So this is obviously a relative path because it starts with dot, dot. And you might think, well, how do I know how to get from this uh, test.css, which is um, actually in the same uh, folder path as these uh these images so you think it would be just um you know you think you wouldn't have to have any path here um you'd have to you'd just do that but this url is relative to or is from the root of the open stage control application so the way i did this was to um look at this and again this is going to answer one of the other questions that dylan had around um using the developer console so i hit f12 um, oh, I also hit F11 at the same time, which is full screen. So hit F12. So this is a developer console. So what I thought was, well, okay, well, how do I know um, where stuff gets loaded from? So if I search in here, this is going to load. This is going to load a style, style sheet somewhere. So if I search for .css, okay, um, and let me look for. Okay, where does it load? Here. Okay, so it looks like the assets folder is located at dot dot assets so basically i went from there and thought okay well if i've put something in assets custom then i need to be referencing things with dot dot slash assets slash custom and sure enough that's what i've ended up with in here and that works absolutely fine you'll see that the images load okay so if we come back to here um uh, so this uh, button we've got four different states we've got like a hover state uh, the way we do that, so within CSS, uh, there is a colon hover, which is a, I think it's, a, what's it called? A, I think it's called a CSS like style modifier, I think. Um, so with, so you've got the dot style name and then colon hover. Um, we set a different uh, image, and that is the um, the button with a um, with the light. So we go here. That's that image with the light on. Um, then I've got dot cool call button dot on okay so dot dot means uh, that both the styles are applied so dot call button dot on um so i think okay well how do i un how do i know that that's the style that i'm looking for okay so if i take a button button like this and i uh, i've turned it on so how do i know that this button is on from a style sheet point of view so if we bring up uh, so bring up f12 again Right, so once we've got F12 up, we've got the developer console. So we want to do Control plus Shift plus C. And then if we select this, what you'll notice is, is that this style has the on. If I click this again, if I go back, this is now doesn't have the on style. If I click it here. So I should show you both at the same time, actually. That would be a lot, lot easier. And then you'd believe me more um, if I just stick this I, uh, no. I just stick this here so if you look on the right hand side what you'll notice is that's the on style goes from there I click it again and the on style so basically if you want to know uh, from a CSS point of view if you want to know whether your button is selected or active or not it has the on style as well as any other styles that it usually has so Go back to the CSS. So this is why we've got dot cool dot button dot on. Uh, we use the O2 uh, PN, PNG file, and we can also do then dot on colon hover. And this might not be a very good way to do it, but I just wanted to show you using four different images for four different states of um, of the button. Uh, we've got a different image again. So if it's already on and you hover over it, then you want a different image. So um, so that's that really. Uh, the reason why we don't have to have all of this um, this stuff in the uh, other styles is because it, it it naturally inherits. So cool button colon hover basically is everything that cool button has plus the hover state. 
and the same for the other ones. So .cool button dot on. Literally, all we need to do is just override the specific thing that we want to change, rather than having to copy all of this stuff as well. So it keeps it kind of neat, kind of together. And again, if you already know CSS, this is me teaching you to suck eggs. But I just thought I'd include it um, for completeness. So um, take it out of editor mode. Uh, click here. You can see button comes on. Um, button appears. I'll cover that in a second. Uh, mouse over. Button on. Mouse over. Button off. Magical. Okay, cool. So that's uh, a nice way then to uh, create uh, custom buttons. And so if you know, use your favourite um, image editing software to create that button, and um, you know, draw a button, and then you can just assign that um, in a custom style sheet in your Open Stage uh, control. A template you know using an external CSS file that you specify on startup um, here in the theme uh, property of the uh, service startup dialog cool the other thing that Dylan asked as well was about making other controls appear and disappear and actually I tried this and it's <laughs> it took me a, a bit longer than I, I had expected and it involved um, reading the forums quite a bit so I try to manually set the visible property of this control, uh, but it didn't work. So um, the sort of long story short, TLDR is um, what you need is create a variable, any old variable. I called it variable one. I haven't given it a value. I haven't given it anything else at all. I just created a variable. It's called variable underscore one. That's all we need. Set the visibility of your desired control to be at here to be um, the value of this variable that's that bit that's all we need and then this bit is um, what we have we have a little bit of scripting in here and so I'll cover this just in a second so just the scripting what we do we say basically um, we value is the value so in scripting, value is literally just the value of this control. And it is, um, for the button, it's either a 0 or a 1. So what we do is, if the value is 0, i.e. the button is not pressed, we set variable 1 to false, else set the variable 1 to true. So because we've got variable 1 mapped to this button's visibility, if the button is not pressed, um, so I, it's not pressed, then that button is invisible. If the button is pressed, then that button is visible. I say it's literally as simple as that. It's not that kind of simple because we have to have that layer of abstraction. And I'm pretty sure from reading the forums and stuff that that is required. I did try in this doing something um, like, uh, you know, set... Um, whatever it is this I did I did try doing something like this and uh, this false like that but that just for me that just just wasn't working at all and then yeah in reading what uh, Jean had said in the forums yeah you need a variable and basically yeah you, you assign so in this you, you assign uh, sorry you assign a visible to the to, to be the variable and then in your control, you have your little bit of scripting that basically sets that variable value, and then it all works fine as expected. So um, that is pretty much that as far as this goes. Um, so what we've what have we covered? Okay, so we've we covered the general principle of assigning a style, sorry, assigning a class to particular things that you want to style, creating an external style sheet where you define that style so that you only have to edit things once. Um, I think you can grow this style sheet. You load this style sheet. So yeah, sorry, you can grow it. I think you can grow this style sheet as and when your needs uh, increase. But you know, to start with, I think it's good practice to separate sort of the function from the style. And if you need to change anything, change it in one place. You load that by setting the path in this theme area. Uh, property here sorry from the startup dialogue and then that's that um, we also covered um, uh, what was I doing from this yes we've got this style 
And then from this, uh, I've got this class call button. Uh, we covered then uh, the different modes of um, of hover and the on style. I worked out what the on style was from uh, bringing up the developer console. And on mind on Windows, it's Control Shift C, but I think it's Control Command C on Mac. Uh, clicking the button, and I'll just tap back to it. So basically, what I did was yeah, Control Shift C, and then you can just click on anything and it will sort of bring it will select that in here and what you'll notice is that this um this one here has the on style actually what you know i can remove that manually and it takes the on style away from it so so we covered that using the developer console so literally it's f12 to bring it up a uh, control shift c or command shift c to then um be able to select a control with your mouse and highlight that control within the element uh, within the document object model the dom which makes it really quickly to work out exactly what's causing what change and then the other thing we covered uh was uh how to set visibility so for any control or, or anything else i guess a property that you want to change assign it to a variable and then use the other button in this example to set the value of that variable um so yeah, I think that's about wraps it up for today. I just wanted to cover a few things off around custom button styling, a little bit of you know uh, control changes and stuff. Um, if there's anything else you want to know, um, then let me know. Uh, I say I'll, I'll try and uh, you know, keep creating these open stage control videos because people seem to like them, um, and uh, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of content out there on this. So as as per usual, if you've got any, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, obviously give it a thumbs down got any specific questions specific sorry if you've got any specific questions you want um answered then please do um put as others have please do comment on these videos because it really helps me get the right feedback to create the co right content for you guys and if you want to see more of this type of content and you think it's worthwhile then please do um, hit the subscribe uh, button and uh, click the bell to get notified when more content like this gets uploaded um as always uh, thanks for watching and see you all next time cheers bye